Elevation, 3,776 meters. Mount Fuji, a World Heritage Site, revered as a sacred mountain since ancient times. Its majestic profile has inspired countless works of art, attracting admirers worldwide as a definitive symbol of Japan's culture. Mount Fuji is today one of Japan's most popular tourism sites and is visited by people from every part of the world. During the mountain climbing season, which begins in July, the mountainside bustles with crowds of climbers. But the unusual conditions at elevations over 3,000 meters can cause illness and accidents requiring rescue, such as altitude sickness and injuries. We'll show you the charms of climbing Mount Fuji, how to climb Mount Fuji safely, and its manners. Mount Fuji has four climbing trails, the Yoshida Trail, the Subashiri Trail, the Kotempa Trail, and the Fujinomiya Trail, which are maintained. Trails open and close at different times of the year due to the remaining snow and so on, but can usually be used from early June to mid-September. Each starting point of all the routes, which is around the fifth station, can be reached by car. During the climbing season, access by car is restricted to avoid traffic congestion and preserve the environment. The restricted periods and sections differ from trail to trail, so be sure to check before you go. While access by car is restricted, you can reach the fifth station from the base by shuttle bus or taxi. Now let's take a closer look at the Yoshida Trail, which is Mount Fuji's most popular trail, and is used by over half the climbers. The Yoshida Trail runs from the Yamanashi Prefecture side to the peak. It usually takes six to eight hours to ascend and three to four hours to descend. The signs and maps of each trail are color-coded. The Yoshida Trail is marked in yellow. There are plenty of mountain huts on the way up the Yoshida Trail, but bear in mind that the summit restrooms are closed depending on the period. Now let's look at each section in turn, starting from the fifth station. Here's our starting point, Fuji Subaru Line, fifth station. You can use the toll road of the Fuji Subaru Line and drive to the fifth station. The elevation of Fuji Subaru Line, fifth station, is 2,305 meters. The summit is about 1,400 meters higher. To prevent altitude sickness, it is important to give yourself one to two hours to get used to the drop in air pressure. Before you set off, be sure to gather information at Mount Fuji 5th Station General Administration Center. This center includes a first aid station and an information center, with personnel trained in assisting foreign visitors. In case you get lost on the way down, follow the yellow signs. Head for Fuji Subaru Line 5th Station. After you set out from the 5th Station, the trail heads gently downward at first. The real climb starts at Izumigataki. 
past the wooded area, you'll reach the sixth station safety guidance center. This center offers information on weather and climbing the mountain. In particular, in early July, the descending trail may still be closed due to the remaining snow, so be sure to check here. At the sixth station, the trail also merges with the traditional Yoshida ascending route. This ascending trail starts at the Kitaguchi Hongu Fuji Senken Jinja Shrine, which is a site famed for its plants, birds, and religious history. A zigzag gravel trail leads up from the sixth station to the seventh station. From the seventh station upward, a trail of rocky ground with gravel and lava rock continues. From here, a steep slope appears too. You'll find first aid centers at the seventh and eighth station. Doctors are stationed here throughout the high season. At the old eighth station, the Yoshida Trail merges with the Subashiri Trail. Here, the ascending trail can get crowded too. At 3,600 meter elevation is the Tori, or Shrine Gate, of the ninth station. From here, the trail gets even steeper. When you walk through the White Tori Gate and reach the summit, you'll find the Kusushi Jinja Shrine. Around here are several mountain huts where you can rest and use the restroom. Around dawn, the area is crowded with lots of climbers waiting to see the sunrise. If you want to do the summit circuit, which means walking around the crater, it takes about one and a half to two hours to complete the circuit. It is necessary to preserve your strength for the descent and keep the weather and your physical condition in mind. The Yoshida Descending Trail and Subashiri Trail use the same path on the way. Be sure to look out for the fork at the 8th station, where the Yoshida Descending Trail and the Descending Subashiri Trail split. It's easy to make a mistake, so be sure to check the signs. After the junction, there are no more mountain huts on the Descending Trail. There are restrooms at the seventh station, but they tend to be crowded. If you need the restroom, please use it at the summit or at the old eighth station. If you walk about 30 minutes down from the restrooms at the seventh station, you'll also find restrooms beside the sixth station safety guidance center. The trail used only for descending ends at the sixth station. From here, you'll walk along the same trail you used to ascend. If you want to drive back from the fifth station, make sure to take sufficient rest before driving. Both of Yamanashi and Shizuoka prefectures are committed to protecting the environment of Mount Fuji and the safety of climbers. These prefectures ask all people who climb Mount Fuji to pay a Mount Fuji preservation fee. The fee is 1,000 yen per person. You can pay this fee at the General Administration Center at the Fuji Subaru Line 5th Station. We ask everyone who climbs Mount Fuji for their understanding and cooperation in ensuring safe climbing and preserving the beauty of Mount Fuji.
Mount Fuji is designated as Fuji Hakone Izu National Park and a place of special scenic beauty. Its precious natural environment and historic and cultural heritage are protected under the National Park Law and Cultural Heritage Protection Law. The fifth station and above are a special protected zone of the National Park. Gathering of plants and animals here is prohibited by law. Therefore, climbers must follow a few rules of etiquette. You should take your trash with you and should not leave the trail. The Mount Fuji Country Code is decided. Please note that removal of any lava or other rocks is prohibited. At one time, littering and discharging human waste were serious problems. Local governments, mountain huts, and NGOs focused on these problems to preserve the environment. A typical solution is the installation of eco-friendly restrooms. To preserve the environment, self-contained bio-toilets are increasingly used on Mount Fuji. The restrooms at the mountain huts are maintained and managed independently at each mountain hut. Maintaining and managing restrooms under Mount Fuji's difficult natural conditions requires a great deal of expense. Besides the Mount Fuji preservation fee to help cover these expenses, climbers are asked to give 200 or 300 yen tip so please have some change ready when you climb the mountain. At an elevation of 3,776 meters, the temperature of Mount Fuji summit can drop below freezing even in midsummer. High winds make you feel even colder. Climbers with inadequate clothing and gear can be caught out by the rapid changes in the weather. Some are unable to make the descent on their own. Let's look at some clothing and gear to ensure a safe and comfortable climb. Wear a long sleeve jacket to protect yourself from sunburn, injury in the event of a fall, and the cold. To ensure perspiration dries off quickly, we recommend fast drying materials. Have a change of clothes ready. Similarly, be ready to wear long pants. We recommend flexible, quick-drying pants such as trekking pants. We also recommend hiking boots that have hard soles and cover the ankles. Avoid wearing old, worn shoes as the soles may break. Sturdy gloves can prevent injury if you fall. A hat prevents sunburns and sunstroke. Fasten the hat firmly so it doesn't blow away in the wind. Fleece and down as thermal outerwear are especially effective against the cold. To protect against rain, be sure to have rainwear, jackets, and pants separated. Waterproof breathable fabrics are best. These also protect you from the cold. Next, your gear. Use a backpack with a capacity of 30 to 40 liters that's easy to carry on your back. Sunglasses protect your eyes against UV light and blowing sand. 
The ascending trail is not illuminated at night, so bring a headlamp. You can buy water and food at Mountain Huts. Bring only as much drinking water and food as you need, according to your physical strength. When stuffing your backpack, put necessary things in plastic bags. As you climb higher, the air pressure will get lower, and you may suffer symptoms of altitude sickness, such as headache, dizziness, or nausea. We asked our guide, Mr. Osamu Sasagawa, about measures against altitude sickness. First, take a deep breath. Now expel all the breath from your lungs. Take deep breaths slowly and deeply from the start of your climb you reach the summit and until you descend to the fifth station. You have to do this constantly. Next, bring plenty of water. You'll sweat out lots of water as you climb and lose moisture from taking deep breaths. Blood circulation will get sluggish. To prevent that, replenish fluids in small amounts frequently. If you get altitude sickness, first take deep breaths, drink water, and warm up your body. If you still don't feel better, you'll have to make the hard decision to start descending. Now, Let's follow Ms. Sugata and Mr. Sasagawa along the Yoshida Trail to the summit of Mount Fuji. We asked Ms. Junko Sugata about the schedule for our climb. We'll arrive at the fifth station between 10.30 and 11 a.m. Get used to the air pressure for one or one and a half hours before departing the fifth station in the afternoon. We'll reach the sixth station in less than an hour. Take a rest here. Then spend three and a half to four hours climbing slowly towards Toyokan, the mountain hut at the top of the seventh station. We'll have dinner there and stay the night. Then see the sunrise called Guraiko at the mountain hut the next morning. Around 4.30 a.m. we'll depart the mountain hut at the seventh station and reach the summit before noon. Then we'll start our descent. Alternatively, we can also do the trip in one day, departing at dawn and returning in the evening. But a bullet climb, departing at night and aiming to see the sunrise, can lead to injury and illness. We recommend avoiding this plan. Now let's set off. The gentle downward stretch has ended. We've reached Izumigataki. Now the real climb begins. Past the wooded area, we'll reach the Six Station Safety Guidance Center. A zigzag gravel road now continues for a while. This zigzag trail continues a long way. The trail is a dull volcanic sand. Don't exert yourself too much in places like this, as you'll soon get very tired. Pace yourself, walk slowly. To avoid falling rocks, stay close to the mountain wall on your ascent. It is now two hours since we departed. We've reached an elevation of 2,700 meters. Mount Fuji 7th Station is just ahead. From here, 
we climb up a steep surface of lava rock. Chains and ropes are strung along both sides. These are not handrails to aid you in climbing. They're just there to show you where the path is. Don't grab onto them. If you use a walking stick or ski poles on rocky areas, don't wave them behind you, as you might hit somebody. Move them directly up and down in small strokes. Climb safely. Don't try and pass others if it looks unsafe or difficult. Three and a half hours after our departure, we reached the mountain hut Toyokan. During the climbing season, mobile phones can be used in some areas. Batteries drain quicker up here than at the mountain base, so in areas where you don't need them, switch your mobile phones off. The mountain huts on Mount Fuji are provided for accommodation and rest. The indoor facilities are basic. Think of it as a place for a brief nap. Here's some etiquette to follow in mountain huts. Most mountain huts are one big room. Pass the time quietly so as not to disturb others. Water is precious on Mount Fuji. There is no water for sinks and restrooms. Bring your own water or purchase it at the mountain huts. Fires are prohibited in mountain huts. Setting our sights on seeing the sunrise at the summit of Mount Fuji, we depart the mountain hut at night. The trail is crowded with climbers. We asked our guide, Mr. Sasagawa, for pointers on climbing at night. To see the sunrise at the summit, we'll have to leave the mountain hut while it's still dark. Be prepared. Be sure to carry a light of some kind. Also, as we climb higher, the temperature will gradually drop. We must take sufficient precautions against the cold. It'll be coldest of all when we see the sunrise at the summit. When climbing rocky surfaces, we won't be able to see our feet in the dark. Shine light at our feet and move slowly and surely. To avoid becoming separated from our group, call out clearly and stick together. On the Yoshida Trail, as an alternative to seeing the sunrise called Graiko at the peak, we can also see it at a mountain hut. Shortly after leaving the mountain hut, we've come close to an elevation of 3,000 meters. Once we pass the Horaikan, the second mountain hut at the 8th station, the rocky trail turns to sand and pebbles. This is the old 8th station, 3,400 meters above sea level. Here the Yoshida Trail merges with the Subashiri Trail. If we feel sick, we can wait here and join our friends as they come back down from the peak. Four hours since we left the mountain hut. We've reached the Tori Gate at the ninth station. Now the trail gets even steeper, the biggest push of all. There are differences in levels along the way. Don't rush, breathe deeply and slowly as you ascend. If it gets crowded, slower climbers should stay on the left, allowing faster climbers to pass on the right. Normally, ascending climbers have right-of-way over descending climbers. But here, it's only possible to climb slowly. So when the ascending side has more room, ascending climbers should cooperate and yield the way. Yeah. 
After a steep, rock-strewn climb, we pass the Torre Gate to reach the summit. At the summit of Mount Fuji, we can do a victory lap on the summit circuit called Ohachimaguri. There is so much to see up here, such as the peak of Kengamane, Japan's highest point, and the remains of mountain worship sites. Windswept and exposed to the elements, the peak is dangerous. On days of driving wind, rain, and thick fog, do not push yourself too hard. Consider your physical condition, allowing for weather conditions and the long descent. And now the descent begins. The Yoshida Trail merges with the Subashiri Trail part of the way down. Be careful at the descending 8th station. Here the Subashiri Trail splits off. The Yoshida Trail heads downward at the split, just after the Chita Edoya mountain hut. We asked Mr. Sasagawa about pointers for the descent. Descending climbers must be careful, but when the trail is a bit wider, choose the side near the mountain and walk where the ground is soft and there are few rocks. Walk so that your heels jab into the ground. Stick ski poles firmly into the ground in front of you. In the afternoon, thunderclouds are especially prone to form on Mount Fuji. If a thunderstorm occurs, take shelter in the nearest mountain hut. Well, there are no mountain huts on the descending route, there are emergency shelters above the seventh station, so I advise everyone to take shelter there. We're finally back at our starting point, Fuji Subaru Line, fifth station. We want everyone who climbs Mount Fuji to enjoy a safe climb. But if you get hurt or fall sick, turn back. Don't push yourself too hard. If you're in trouble or have an emergency, contact the Mount Fuji 5th Station General Administration Center. Please observe all rules and etiquette to leave our irreplaceable Mount Fuji intact for future generations.